Two doctors never moved from the noble child. After the government fire. He's coughing. <laughs> Georgi, did you hear? He's coughing. I, I will mind you that I was lying here. The lukewarm bath. There's been, been a little error in warming the bath for to your grace. I, I, I'm afraid I can't agree with you. The temperature of the bath was exactly right. More like him if I felt doing a magic break. But do pay more attention to him. He's looking feverish, Georgi.
be gone. But the food wagon is only made too early. It's time for us to clear out. All of us. That must be the escape burning. The baby. What are you doing with it? It got left behind. She simply left it there. Michael, who was kept out of all the drop. He's waking up. Better put him down, I tell you. I think you what would happen to you if you were seen with that baby. That's right. Once I get started, they'll kill each other off. Oh, hand is the time. We have to go, all of us. Can you hear? Put him down. The nurse asked me to hold him a moment. She's not coming back, you simpleton. Just keep your hands off him. Crucia, you're a good soul, but you're not very bright, I tell you. If he had the plague, he couldn't be any more. He famous. hasn't got the plague. He looks at me. He's human. Then don't look at him. Crucia, you're a fool. The kind that always get put upon. A person need only say, run for the salad, you have the longest leg and you run. Look, I have an ox cap outside. You can come with us if you hurry. Lord, by now the whole neighborhood must be in flames. She was standing between courtyard and gate. She heard, or she thought she heard, a low voice calling. The child called to her, not whining, but calling quite sensibly, or so it seemed to her. Oh, it said, help me. Hearing this, she went back for one more look at the child, only to sit with him for a minute or two. Only till someone should come, his mother or anyone. Only for the danger was too great. The city was full of flame and crying. Terrible is the temptation to do good. And she sat with the child a long time, till evening came, till night came. Till dawn came. She sat too long, too long she saw the soft breathing, the small clenched fists. But towards morning, seduction was complete. And she rose. And bent down, and sighing, took the child and carried it away. As if it was stolen good, she picked him up. As if she was a thief, she crept away. Away. <laughs> The flight into the northern mountains. When Grusha Vashnazi left the city, on the Krushinian highway, along the northern mountains, she sang a song. She bought some milk. How will this human child escape? The down! The trap setters! Into the deserted mountains she journeyed. Along the Grushinian highway she journeyed. She, she sang, sang a song. She bought some milk. Meal time is meal time. Now you can sit. I'll go get us a little pitcher of milk. Grandfather, can I have a little pitcher of milk and a corn cake, maybe? Milk? We have no milk. The soldiers from the city are our goats. Go to the soldiers if you want milk. But you must have a little pitcher for a baby. Oh, for God bless you, man. Who said anything about God bless you? Can we pay like princes? Heading clouds, backside your water. How much for the milk? Three piastres. Milk is gone up. Three piastres? Michael, did you hear that? I simply can't afford it. Suck. Think of the three piastres. There's nothing there, but you think you're drinking and that's something. Grandfather will pay. I might need to strike you. I thought it would be half a piastre for the milk, but the baby must be fed. How about one piastre for that little drop? Two. Okay, Tom, shut the door again. Here's two piastres. The milk better be good. But I still have a two days' journey ahead of me. This is a murderous business you have here. Kill us all just your milk. This is an expensive joke. Take a sip, Michael. Around here, they think we earn our money just. Sitting around. Such a nice little load for a girl to take on. As Grusha Bush Nancy went northward, the prince's iron shirts were after her. How the barefoot girl escaped the iron shirts. The down! The trap setters! They hunt even by night. Pursuers never tire. Butchers sleep little. Sleep little. Falling! You horrible little.
not in it. The senior officer sees this in little things. Yes, when I made the fat girl. Yes, you grabbed her husband as I commanded, and you killed him in the bay at my request. But did you enjoy it? Well, like a loyal private, or were you just doing your duty? I've kept an eye on you, blockhead. You're a hollow reed and a tinkling cymbal. Now, don't think I've forgotten how insubordinate you are either. Stop limping. I forbid you to limp. You limp because I sold the horses, and I sold the horses because I'd have never got that price again. You limp to show me you don't like marching. I know you. It won't help. You wait. A good soldier has his heart and soul. When he receives an order, he gets a hard. And when he drives his lance to the enemy's gun, he... Um, he lets himself be torn apart for his superior officer. And as he lies dying, he takes note that his corporal is not in approval. And that's his dearest wish. You won't get any nod of approval, but you'll croak all right. Christ! How am I supposed to get my hands on the governor's bastard with the help of a fool like you? <laughs> now you've wet yourself again. And you know I do linen, Michael. This is where we part company. It's far enough from the city. They wouldn't want you that much, they'd have come looking all the way out here. Peasant woman, she's kind and I'm just smell the milk. So. Farewell, Michael. I'll forget how you kicked me in the back all night to make me walk faster. And you can forget the maid affair. It was meant well. I'd like to have kept you. Who well, knows? It, it's so tiny, but it, it can't be. I must turn around now. My sweetheart, the soldier, might be back soon. And suppose he can find me. You can't ask that, can you? straight into the arms of the armed forces. Where are you coming from and when? Are you having illicit relations with the enemy? Where is he hiding? What movements is he making in your rear? How about the hills? How about the valleys? How are your stockings held in position? I always withdraw <laughs> What, blockhead? I always withdraw. At least in that respect, I can be relied on. Why are you staring like that at my lads? In the field, no soldier drops his lance, and that's a rule. Learn it by heart, blockhead. Now, Lee, where are you headed? To meet my intended, I'm Simon Shashaba of the Palace Garden Yuka. Simon Shashaba? Sure, I know. I gave him the key so I could look you up once in a while. Blockhead, we are getting to be unpopular. We must make her realize we have honorable intentions. Now, behind the pound of the body, I can see a serious nature. 
So let me tell you officially, I want a child from you. Not had she understood me. Is it a sweet shock? Then first I must take the noodles out of the other officer. Then first I must change my torn shirt, Colonel. <laughs> but away with the jokes. Away with my lance. We're looking for a baby. A baby from a good family. Have you ever heard of such baby dressed in fine linen and suddenly turn it up here? Yeah? No, I haven't heard a thing! Oh. Bloodiest times for our kind of people. Hide him! Quick, your own ships are coming. I laid him on your doorstep, but he isn't mine. Who's coming? What iron ships? Don't ask questions. The iron ships are looking for it. They've no business in my house. But I must have a little talk of it. You take off the fine linen, it will give us away. Lay in my foot. In this house, I make the decisions. Once you abandon him, it's a sin. Look, they're coming out from behind those trees. You should have run away. You made them angry. Iron shirts. Yeah, the babies. Once they come in. Well, you must have handed them over to them. Say he's yours. Yes. They'll run through if you hand him over. Suppose we ask for him. The soul for the harvest is in the house. You must say he's yours. This name's Michael. But I shouldn't have told you that. Don't nod like that. And don't tremble. Oh no, Tess. Yes. Stop saying yes. I can't stand it. Don't you have any children? Then maybe he's an iron shirt. Do you want him to run children through with a lance? You'll fall him out. No <coughs> fooling the glasses in my house, you shall. Is that what I breed you for? Wash your neck before you speak to your mother. That's true, we can't get in the thing around here. So you'll see if yours. Yes. Look, they're coming. Well, here she is. What did I tell you? What a nose I have. Lady, I have a question for you. Why did you run away? What did you think I was going to do to you? I bet it was something dirty. Confess! I'd lapped some milk on the stove and I suddenly remembered it. Or maybe you imagined I looked at you in a dirty way. Like there could be something between us. A loose sort of look, if you know what I mean. I didn't see it. But it's possible. I mean, after all, I'll be friends with you. Quite I could think of all sorts of things that we could do if we were alone. Shouldn't you be out in the yard feeding the hens? Soldier, I didn't know a thing about it. Please don't be in the roof over our heads. What are you talking about? She left it on my doorstep. I had nothing to do with it, I swear. <laughs> so there's a little something in the crib, is there? Blockhead, I smell a thousand piastres. Take the old girl outside and hold on to her. It looks like I have a little cross examination. So you've got the child I wanted from you? I said he's mine. He's not the one you're after. I'll just take him. He's mine. He's mine. Fine little! Ah! <laughs> You'll pay for this, blockhead! In the northern mountains, seven days the sister Kusha Fashnazi journeyed across the glaciers, and down the slope she journeyed. When I enter my brother's house, she thought, he will rise and embrace me. Is that you, sister, he will say. I have long expected you. This is, what, this is my wife, and this is my farm come to my marriage. With eleven horses and thirty-one cows, sit down. Sit down with your child and eat at our table. The brother's house was in a lovely valley. When the sister returned to the brother, she was ill from walking. Where you've come from, Rusha? Across the desert, I pass the rent in. This is my wife, Nika. I thought you were in service in Ukraine. I was. Was it a good job? We were told it was. Have we not got killed? Yes, you heard there were riots. Remember your aunt told us, Nico? Here with us, it's very quiet. City folk always want more going on. Is there a father? I thought not. We must think of something. She's religious. <laughs> you have a child? <laughs> yes. Oh, She's ill. What are you going to do? Sit, sit. I think it's just weakness. She has spots of it, was. It's only weakness. Don't worry about it. Better sitting down. Is the child here? She's on her way to her husband. Well, if her husband's not in the city, where is he? She got married on the other side of the mountain, she says. On the other side of the mountain? I see. Oh, 
have to lie down somewhere the front day. If it's conception, we'll all get it. Has your husband got a farm? He's a soldier. He's coming into a farm, a small one from his father. Isn't he at the war? When he returns from the war, he'll return to his farm. But why do you want to go to the farm? To wait for him. But you're going there now? Yes, to wait for him. Waiting at the farm, a soldier sit down, eat. She's got scarlet fever. It's just a weak person. <laughs> We'll get a bed in a bit. She has a good heart, but just wait till after supper. I'll just take him. But you can't stay here long with the child. He's religious, you see. The sister was so ill. The cowardly brother had to give her shelter. <laughs> Summer departed. Winter came. The winter was long. The winter was short. People, People mustn't, mustn't know anything. Rats mustn't bite. Spring <laughs> mustn't hide. We must be clever. We make ourselves as small as cockroaches. The sister in law will forget we're in the house and then we can stay until the snow melts. Why are you sitting there looking up like coach then, you two? Is it too cold in the room? It's not too cold, the front thing. If it's too cold in the room, you shouldn't be sitting there. And he could never forgive herself. I was not priest in question about the child. He did, but I didn't tell him anything. That's good, that's good. I wanted to speak to you about Anika. She has a good heart, but she's very, very sensitive. People need only mention of how much she gets worried. One time, our milkmaid went to church with a hole in the Ever since, and he was worn two pairs of stockings to church. It's the old family. It's not dripping. It must be a barrel, Lincoln. Yes, it must be a barrel. You've been here six months now, haven't you? What's I talking about it, huh? You can't imagine how worried you get about your soldier husband. Suppose he comes back and can't find you, she says and lies awake. He can't come before the spring, I tell her. The dear woman. When do you think you'll come? What do you think? Not before the spring, you agree? You don't think he'll come at all, do you? For when the snow comes and the snow melts on the passes, you can't stay. They make him a look for you, as what you talk of an illegitimate child. Rusha, the snow is melting on the roof. Spring is here. Yes. So you need a place to live. Because of the child, you need a husband. Now, Rusha, I've made course inquiries to see if we can find your husband. Rusha, I have one. A small farm. On the other side of the mountain, and she's willing. I can't marry you. I must wait for Simon Shashava. Of course. You don't need a man in bed. You need a man on paper. The son of this person was going to die. Isn't that wonderful? And all in line without surely. When you met him, it was on his last gasp. So you know, <laughs> what do you say? It's like you'd use a document with stamps on it. Be mindful. Stamps make all the difference. Without stamps, the sharp wouldn't go with a sharp. And you have a place to live. How much does the peasant woman want? 400 piastres. Where will you find that? And he costs milk money. No woman no, knows that. I'll do it. I'll let the peasant woman know. Michael, you cause a lot of fuss. I came to you as the pear tree comes to the sparrow, and as the Christian bends down and picks up the last crust of bread, so nothing goes to waste. Michael, it would have been better had I left you in that third courtyard in Nika. No, I am poor. The bridegroom is on his deathbed, and the bride is on his The bridegroom's mother was waiting at the door, telling her to hurry. The bride brought a child along. The witness hid it during the wedding. Quick, or you'll die on this before the wedding. I was never told she had a child already. What difference does it make? It can't matter to him in this condition. To him? But I'll never survive the shame. We are honest people. My Yusuf doesn't have to marry a girl with a child. All right, make this another 200 piastres. You will have it in writing, but the farm will go to you. The crew shall have the right to live here for two years. That'll hardly cover the funeral costs. I hope to really lend a hand with the work. And what happened to that monk? Well, he must have slipped through the kitchen window. The whole village would be enough to send him to the tavern. I only hope. French, I had a cheap monk. We will send Simon to Shah after all. Yes, yes. Won't you take a look at him? He's not moving an eyelid. I hope we're not too late. I hope you don't mind waiting a few moments. My son's bride has just arrived from the city. An emergency wedding is about to be set. <laughs> I might have known you couldn't keep your trap shut. Here is the license. Me and the bride's brother are the witnesses. Are you prepared to be faithful, obedient, and a good wife to this man, and to cleave to him <laughs> until death you do part. I 
Ai! Are you prepared to be a good and loving husband to your wife until death you do part? Of course he is. Didn't you hear him say yes? All right. He <laughs> declared the marriage contracted. Nothing doing. The wedding cost quite enough. I must take care of the mourners. Did we say 700? 600. Now, who shall I don't stay and get to know the guests so far well? And if my widowed sister comes to visit me, she will welcome my wife or I'll show my teeth. When our Swedish child comes home. Is there a child? I don't see a child, and if you don't see a child either, you understand? We're made to go now, I saw all sorts of things in that tavern. Now come along. This is my daughter-in-law. She arrived just in time to find dear Yesup still alive. He's been here for a whole year now, hasn't he? But now Vasily was drafted. He was there to say goodbye. Such terrible things for the farm. Father and Beth and the corn all right. Good blessing if he doesn't suffer too long, I'd say. You know why you thought he was in his bed? Because of the draft. And now his end has come. <laughs> Sit down, please, and we'll have some cake. This is a child, you say? How could that have happened? It's a little bit of Persia, we bought it from soldier. 
They are here. What is the matter with you? Are you going to look after our guests? What's all this city nonsense got to do with us? In any case, the war's over. So they can't force us around the army anymore. Yes. Have some more cakes and welcome, there are more. How many more cakes are you going to stuff down there, folks? Do you think I can shit money? <laughs> <laughs> By day there's the child, by night there's the husband. That's her work, not yours. Where is she hiding out now? Grusha, yes, at once you. There's still two holes to mend. Oh, scrub my back. Can't the peasant do it himself? Can't the peasant do it himself? Get the brush to hell with you. You have visited her all my life. It's too cold. I'll run for hot water. Just let me go. You stay here. Uh, rub harder. No shirking. You've seen a naked fella before, haven't you? That baby certainly didn't come out of thin air. Child was not conceived in joy, if that's what you mean. You told me at the time. <laughs> it's a nice thing you've saddled me with. A simpleton for a wife. She just isn't cooperative. Poor, but go easy. Ow! Go easy, I said. <coughs> Maybe you did something wrong in the city. I wouldn't be surprised. Why else should you be here? Uh... But I won't talk about that. I also haven't said anything about that illegitimate object you brought into my house either. My patience has limits. It's against nature. And even if your soldier husband does come back, you're married. Yes. But he won't come back. Don't you believe it? Oh. You're cheating me. You're my wife and you're not my wife. Where you lie, nothing lies yet. No other woman can lie there. I go to work in the morning, I'm tired. I lie down at night, I'm as awake as the devil. God has given you sex and what do you do? I haven't got ten years streets by myself a woman in the city. Besides, it's a long way. A woman weeds the fields, opens up her legs. That's why I would have in the stairs. Do you hear? Sorry, I didn't mean to cheat you out of it. Didn't mean to cheat me out of it. <laughs> Pour some more water. Ow! As she sat by the stream to wash the linen, she saw his image in the water. And, and his, his face, face grew dimmer with the passing moons. As she raised herself to bring the linen, she heard his voice from the murmuring lake hall. And his voice grew dimmer with the passing moons. Evasions and sighs grew more numerous. Tears and sweat flowed. With the, the passing moons, the child grew up. You can't play with the light bulb. Young lady, I hope she's well. Good morning to the soldier who got beat by his return in good health. How are things here? Things are bearable. The neighbour considered up. Winter was a trifle rough. The neighbour as usual, Simon. They won't ask for a certain lady still dips her toes and washing her dinner. The answer is no. It's the eyes and the bushes. Ah, the lady's speaking of the soldiers. Here stands a paymaster. A job with 20 piastres. And lodgings. I find the barracks under the date trees. Yes, yes. <coughs> and has not forgotten. So the door is still on its hinges, as they say. So I can never return to Newport. Something has happened. What could have happened? For one thing, I did not deny I shut down. Well, I'm sure Bruce Bushnazi had her reasons for that. So I'm, I'm no longer called what I used to be called. I don't understand. When do women change their names, Simon? Listen, nothing stands between us. Everything is just as it was. You must believe that. Nothing stands between us. And yet there's something. How can I explain it so fast? Maybe it's no longer necessary. It's very necessary. There's a young lady who wished to say, someone's come too late. So many words are said. So many left and said. The soldiers. Where he comes from, he does not say. Hear what he thought and did not say. The battle grew gray at noon, bloody at dawn. The first man fell in front of me, the second at my side, the third behind me. I trod on the first, left the second behind him. The third was run through by the captain. 
One of my brothers died by steel, the other by smoke. My hands froze in my gloves, my toes in my boots. I drank maple juice, I fell on aspen buds. I slept on stone and water. I see there's a cap in the grass. Is there a little one already? There is, Simon. There's no hiding that from you, but please don't worry, he's not lying. Once the wind, once starts to blow, say it goes to every kind. <coughs> there was yearning, but there was no waked in. The oath is broken, neither could say why. Hear what she fought to pick up the sake. And you went into battle, soldier. The bloody battle, the bitter battle. I found a helpless infant. I had not the heart to destroy him. I stooped for breadcrumbs on the floor. I had to break myself, for which was not mine. Something that was someone else's. The tree needs water to grow. And the lamb loses its way when the shepherd is asleep. His cry is unheard. Give me back the chain I gave you. No, better yet. Simon, please! He isn't mine. He isn't mine. What's wrong? Soldiers! They're taking Michael away! away. Are you crucial? Is this your child? Yes, Simon! We have orders in the name of the Lord to take this child from in your custody back to the sea. It is suspected that the child is Michael Abashvili, son and heir of the late Governor Georgi Abashvili. Wife, Matella Abashi. Here's the doctor. Let me see. Please don't take him away. He's mine. He's mine. The Iron Shirts took the child, the beloved child. The unhappy girl followed them to the city, the dreaded city. She who had borne him demanded the child. She who had raised him faced trial. Who will judge the case? Who will the child be assigned? Who will the judge be? A good judge. A bad? The, the city, city was, was in flames. In the judge's seat sat Asak. The story of the judge. Hear the story of the judge. How he turned judge. How he passed judgment. And what kind of a judge he was. On that Easter Sunday of the Great Revolt, when the Grand Duke was overthrown, this governor, Abashvili, father of our child, lost his head. The village scrivener, Aztak, found a fugitive in the woods and hid him in his hut. No, not a horse. Won't do any good that she's around like a snotty nose in April. Stand still, I say. Right. Sit down. Feed. Now take the cheese. <laughs> Chopped like a grand duke, or an old soul. I can't stand it. We have to be acceptable thinkers as God made them. <coughs> and not you. I once you ever seen a judge who farted at a public dinner to show an independent spirit. Why don't you say something? Show me your hand. Can't you hear? Hiding you from the cops like you're an honest man. Why were you running like that if you're a landowner? For that's what you are. Don't deny it. I can see it in your guilty face. Get out! What are you waiting for, peasant blogger? Pursuit! Neither of the right to attention. Make proposition. Make what? A proposition. Well, if that isn't the height of insolence, he's making me a proposition. The bitten man scratches his fingers bloody, and the leech that's biting him makes him a proposition. Get out, I tell you! Uh, the standpoint of view, uh, persuasion, a uh, hundred thousand piastres, one night. Yes. What? 
You think you can buy me for 100,000 piastres? Let's say uh, 150,000. Where are they? Uh, I have not them yet. It will be sent. I hope to not doubt. Doubt very much. Get out! How's that? Oh, I'm not in! <laughs> oh, so you're uh, sniffing around here again, Shova. You caught some of the rabbits, as that. And you promised me it wouldn't happen again. Shova. Don't talk about things you uh, don't understand. The rabbit is a dangerous and destructive beast. It feeds on plants, especially on the species, species of plants known as weeds. They must therefore be exterminated. Hazdek, don't be so hard on me. I lose my job if I don't arrest you. I know you have a good heart. I do not have a good heart, Silva. How often must I tell you I'm a, I'm a man of intellect? I know, Aztec. You're a superior person. You say so yourself. I'm just a Christian and an ignoramus. So I ask you, if one of the prince's rabbits is stolen and I'm a policeman, what should I do with the offended party? Shova, Shova, shame on you. You stand and ask me a question in which nothing could be more seductive. It's like you were a woman. Let's say that bad girl in Ovna. Can you show me your thigh? It's a monotonous thigh, that would be. And you ask me, what shall I do if my thigh itches? Is she as innocent as she pretends? Of course not. I catch a rabbit, but you catch a man. Man is made in God's image, not so a rabbit. I'm a, man, a rabbit eater. But you're a man in the Shoba, and God will pass judgment on you! Shoba, go on and repent! Let's stop, stop, stop. There is something. Oh, it's nothing. Go on and repent. <sighs> no, you're surprised, huh? Surprised I didn't hand you over. I couldn't hand over a bed, but uh, no. Goes against the grain. No, finish your cheese. But it's a clever poor man, or else they'll catch you. <laughs> That's how you can explain how a poor man behaves. <laughs> that box is the table. Lay it out on, on the table. Now, insert your cheese, like it might be snatched from you at any moment. Right of you to be safe, man. Right? Hold your knife like an undersized sickle and give your cheese a trouble look because that old beautiful thing is already fading away. And they're after you. Which speaks in your favour. How can we be sure they're not mistaken about you? In Tiflis one time they uh, hanged a landowner, a turf, who could prove the court of his peasant instead of maybe cutting them in half as is the custom. He squeezed twice the usual amount of tax up then. The zeal was above suspicion. And yet, they hanged him like a common criminal. Because he was a turk. Something he didn't do much about. What injustice! He got onto the gallows by a sheer fluke. Sure. I don't trust you. Thus Aslak gave the old beggar a bed, and lived. But the old beggar was the old butcher, the grand duke, and was ashamed. He denounced himself and ordered the policeman to take him to Newgarden, to court, to be judged. I have the grand duke, the grand duke, the grand butcher to escape! In the name of justice, I have to be severely judged in a public trial! <laughs> <laughs> Who is this queer bird? That's our village criminal, as that. I am contemptible. I am a traitor, a branded criminal. <coughs> Tell them, Flapper, how I insisted on being tied up and brought to the capital because I sheltered the Grand Duke of the Grand Swindle by mistake, and how I found out afterwards. See the marked man denounce himself. Tell them how I force you to walk all around Shoemaker Street. 
to all my friends. It wasn't nice of you, I said. Shut him out, Shorba! You don't understand. A new age is upon us. Let it go thundering over you. You're finished. The police will be wiped out. Poof. Everything will be gone into. Everything will be brought into the open. The guilty will get themselves up. Why? They can't escape the people in any case. Tell them how I shoved it all along Shoemaker Street. In my ignorance, I had the grand swindler to escape to. Tear me to pieces, brothers. I wanted to get in first. And what did your brothers answer? They comforted them on Butcher Street. And they locked themselves sick in Shoemaker Street. That's all. But with you, it's, uh, it's different. I can see that you're a man of iron. Brothers, where's the judge? I must be tried. There's the judge. Now please stop rubbing us. It's a rather sore spot. Step Go to the judge's seat. Now sit in. The judge was always a rascal. But the rascal shall be the judge. There was civil war in the land. The mighty were not safe. And Asdak was made a judge by the Iron Shirts. And Asdak remained a judge for two years. When the towns were set on fire, as rivers of blood rose higher and higher, cockroaches crawled out of every crack. The court was full of schemers. And the church of foul blasphemers. In the judge's cassock sat Asdak. This is me. Maybe when you've got a stiff breeze from an end of the day. It does just as good to be done in the open. The wind blows her skirt up. You can see what she's got. Shova, we've been eating too much. These official journeys are exhausting. It's a question of your daughter in law. Your honour, it's a question of the family honour. I wish to bring action on behalf of my son who's away on business on the other side of the mountain. This is the offended stableman, and this is my daughter-in-law. I accept. Good. Now the formalities are disposed of. This is a case of rape. Your Honour. I caught the, I caught the fellow in the act. Ludovico was on the floor in the stable. Stable? Quite right. Lovely horses. I especially love the, uh, two mm -hmm. The first thing I did, of course, was to question Ludovico on behalf of myself. I said I especially like the little roan. <coughs> really? Ludovico confessed that the stableman took her against her will. Take off your veil, Ludovica. <coughs> Ludovica, you uh, please the court. Now, tell us how it happened. Well, when I entered this table to see the new folk, this tableman said to me, it's hard today, and then he laid his head over the left breast. I said to him, don't do that. But he continued to hit me indecently, and before I realized his sinful intentions, he got much closer. It was all over when my father-in-law entered and accidentally trod on me. On behalf of my son, <coughs> you admit you um, started it. <coughs> yep. <laughs> You like to lie a long time in the bathtub? Um, half an hour or so. Public prosecutor, drop your knife there on the ground. <coughs> Ludovica, pick up that knife. See that? <laughs> the way it moves. The rape is now proven. By eating too much sweet things, especially by lying too long in warm water, by laziness and too soft a skin, you have 
great, that unfortunate man. I think you can go around with a behind like thou and get away with it in court. This is a case of intentional assault with a dangerous weapon. You are sentenced to hand over that little roan your father liked to ride on his son's behalf. You know, come with me to the stable so the court can inspect the scene of the crime of the Vicar. When the era of disorder came to an end, the Grand Duke returned. The governor's wife returned. A trial was held. May he die. The people's court had burned anew. And the fear seized as that. days of your slavery are numbered, maybe even minutes. For a long time now I have held in the iron curve of reason, and it has thrown you to the police. I have lashed you with reasonable arguments, and I have manhandled you with logic. You are by nature a weak man, and if one slyly throws an argument in your path, you have to uh, snap it up. You can't resist. It is in your nature to lick the hand of some superior being, but superior beings can be of very different kinds. And now, with your liberation, you will soon be able to follow your natural inclinations, which are low. You'll be able to follow your infallible instincts, which teaches you to plant your fat heel on the faces of men. People's quarters are already aflame. Go and get me that big rock I will sit on. This is the statue book. And I've always used it as you can testify. Now I'd better look in this book and see what they can do to me. I'd love the damn man to get away with murder. So I'll have to pay for it. I have poverty onto its skinny legs, so they'll hang me for drunkenness. I peeped into the richest man's pocket, which is bad taste, and I can't hide anywhere. Everybody knows me because I, I helped everybody. Someone's coming! It's the end! And now that you enjoy seeing what a great man I am, I'll deprive him of that pleasure. I'll beg my knees for mercy, spit a with slobber down my chin. The fear of death is in me. What sort of creature is that, Shalvan? A willing one, Your Highness. A man ready to oblige. Natella Abushvili, wife of the late governor, has just returned. She is looking for her two-year-old son, Michael. She has been informed that the child has been carried off into the mountains by a former servant. The child will be brought back, Your Highness, at your service. They say that the person in question is passing it off as her own. She will be beheaded, Your Highness, <laughs> at your service. That is all. I don't like that man. At your service, Your Highness. It will be arranged. The Chalk Circle. Hear now the story of the trial concerning Governor Abashvili's child and the determination of the true mother. By, by the, the famous test of the Chalk Circle. He's old enough now. He watched himself. You're lucky he's not a real judge. As that, a drunk who doesn't know what he's doing. He's the biggest thief and bottom bite for he gets everything mixed up. And the reason I've offered me enough bribes, the likes of us do pretty well. And we've got a now, such a I'd better offer up another threat that he may be drunk. But why must you hold on to it if he isn't yours? He thinks like these. He is mine, I brought him up. And I thought what happened if she came back. Well, at first I thought I'd just hand him over and then I thought she wouldn't come back. She's going to borrow a copy to mum, won't you? I swear to anything for you, you're a decent girl. I'm wrong by Simon, though. I've been talking with him. He can't understand. Can't be bothered whether he understands or not. Look, he knows the child isn't yours, yet you're married until death do you part. He can't understand that. I wish the lady to know that I will swear that I'm the father of the child. Thank you, Simon. I'm also lucky to know that my hands are not tied. Neither are hers. You needn't have said that. You know she's married. He needs no rubbing in. Where's the judge? Has I 
morning and seen the judge. There's nobody <coughs> here yet. Nothing but a bed and a pitcher. In the entire house. You should never come back to Newkirk. Well, I can see the one I've run over with the head. What's the matter? Do you know it? No. Well, she's the one who saw the Abash baby child, or so they say. If you know anything about it, you can make some money. Was it him? If he better keep his mouth shut, he'd be admitting he was after the child. He's almost forgotten about him. At least there are no common people here. I can't stand this smell. It gives me a migraine. Please, madame, I must ask you to be careful what I say until we have another judge. I did not say anything. I love the people with their simple, straightforward minds. It's only that their smell brings on my migraine. There won't be many spectators. The whole population is sitting at home behind locked doors because of the riots in people's quarters. Is that the creature? Please, madame, abstain from invective until it is certain that the Grand Duke has appointed a new judge who got rid of the present one. He's about the lowest fellow ever seen in a judge's gun. Things are all set to move now. Do you see? Your Grace, pull your hair from the splash. You didn't want to ask the poor. He goes by the fix. <laughs> Time to run away, will you? Want to to justice? There it is! Oh, bravo, oh. bravo! I just like that now from the moment I first saw him. I can't see. Give me your rag. What is it you want to see? You, you dogs. Good morning, dogs. How goes it, dogs? How's the dog world? Does it smell good? Got another boot for me to lick? Are you having each other's throats, dogs? Stop. I bring a dispatch from the Grand Duke containing the latest appointment. Attention! Of the new judge, it says. We thank the saving of a life indispensable to the country's welfare, a certain Azdak of Nuka, which is he. That's him, Your Excellency. What is going on here? It seems that his honour Azdak was already his honour Azdak, but on the people of the Angiasia was pronounced the Grand Duke's enemy. See to it that your honour Azdak is exposed and no more for it. I shake up their hands. I hope you saw it. It's a catastrophe. What does your honour desire? Nothing, fellow dogs. Maybe an occasional boot to let. I pardon you. Come get me some red wine, sweet pie. Go to the case. Except. Oh, dear. Well, I can't be filled with you, they say. A quite ridiculous case, Your Honor. The accused is abducted to child and refuses to hand it over. Hmm. A most attractive person. I declare the proceedings open and demand the whole truth, especially from you. Pecker of justice. As the popular saying goes, blood is thicker than water. The court wants to know the lawyer's key. I beg your pardon? Oh, I see. 500 castors to answer the court so my unusual question. Didn't you hear? The question is unusual. I ask it because I listen in quite a different way when I know you are good. Thank you, Your Honor. High Court of Justice. Of all ties, the ties of blood are the strongest. A mother and a child. Is there a more intimate relationship? Can one to your mother from its child? High Court of Justice. She has conceived the child in the holy ecstasies of love. She has carried it in her womb. She has borne it with pain. She has fed it with her blood. Nature What's your child? answer to all this and anything else that lawyer <coughs> have to say? It's mine. Is that all? I hope you can prove it. Why should I assign the child to you in any case? I brought him up. Like the priest says, to my best knowledge and conscience. I always found him something sweet. Most of the time he had a roof over his head. And I put him first. I told him how to be nice to everybody. I told him how to work from the very beginning. As much as he could, that is. He was only very little. I got him this. 
It is significant that the girl herself doesn't claim any type of love with her hair and a child. The court takes note of that. Thank you, Your Honor. Please, <coughs> now allow a woman of this sorrow, who has already suffered a loss of her husband and now has to fear the loss of her child, to address a few words. The most gracious Ella Ashby. A most cruel fate, sir, forces me to describe to you the torture of the bereaved mother's soul. The sleepless night is outrageous the way this woman is being treated. Her husband's palace is closed to her. The revenue of her estates is blocked and she is called bloodily told that it's tied to the child as a heir. Child do you think without that child? She can't even pay her lawyers. Of course, it is correct that the trial will also decide about the Abashvili estates, which are rather extensive. I say also advisedly, for in the foreground there is the human tragedy of a mother, as Matella Abashvili very properly explained in a very few words of her moving statement. Even if Michael Abashvili were not hers in the estates, he would still be a dearly beloved child of my client. Stop. The court is touched by the mention of the state. It's a proof of human feeling. Thank you, Your Honor. We can prove in any case that the woman who took the child is not the child's mother. Permit me to lay before the court the bare facts. High Court of Justice, due to an unfortunate chain of circumstances, Michael Abishvili was left behind on that Easter Sunday whilst his mother was making her escape. Grusha, a pal palace kitchen maid, was last seen with the baby. All the missus was thinking of is what dresses she took off. Nearly a year later, Grusha turned up in a mountain village with the baby and there entered into a state How did you get to that mountain village? But Your Honor, it was mine. I'm the father, Your Honor. I used to look after them, Your Honor, by theatrics. This man is engaged to Grusha, High Court of Justice. His testimony is suspect. Are you the man she married in the mountain village? Why? Has he opened his bed? Tell the truth. He didn't get that far. I'm married to the child who have a roof over his head. Your Honor, I'd like to stay in every. I am no longer free, Your Honor. And the child you claim comes from Corridge. I'm going to ask you a question. What sort of child is he? Is he a, a ragged little bastard or from a good family? He's an ordinary child. I mean, did he have the fine features from the very beginning? He had a nose on his face. Quite a significant comment. It is said of me that I went out one time and uh, sniffed at the rosebud before rendering the verdict. Tricks like that are needed nowadays. But I'll make it short and not listen to any more lies. Especially not yours. I can only imagine what you've cooked up to cheat me. I know you people, you swindlers! I well, see so you wanted to cut it short, now I've seen what you accepted. Shut up! Did I accept anything from you? I haven't got anything! True, quite true. From starvelings I never get a thing. I might as well starve myself. You want justice, but you want to pay for it, hmm? When you go to a butcher, you know you have to pay. But you lot go to a judge as if you're off to a funeral supper when the horse is shot. The horse might have on its leg. The saying is, better a treasure in the newer than a stone in a mountain stream. Fine day. Let's go fishing, said the angler to the worm. I am my own master, said the servant, and cut off his foot. I love you as a father, said the sad to the peasants, as he had the son of his head chopped off. A fool's worst enemy is himself. However, a fart has no nose. Find ten be after for indecent language in court. That'll teach you what justice is. Fine kind of justice. You play fast and loose with us because we don't talk as refined as that crowd with the lawyers. Mm. There's something in that. I'm an ignorant man. Haven't even a decent pair of pants on under this gun. Yep. <gasps> wow! <laughs> <laughs> Everything goes on food and drink. I was thinking about that. Incidentally, I'll find ten piastres for contempt of court. 
And you're a very silly girl for turning me against you instead of making eyes at me and wiggling your backside a little to keep me in good temper. Twenty piastres! Even if it was thirty, I tell you what I think about you just as you drunken onion. How dare you talk down to me like a cracked desire on a church window? As if you were somebody. For you weren't born to this. You weren't born to wrap your own mother on the knuckles that she's bought a solid bowl of salt from some place. And you were ashamed of yourself when you see how I tremble before you. You've made yourself their servant. So they can take houses. Houses they already stolen. Since one of the houses belongs to the bedbugs, you can do what you want. You can take the child away from me, a hundred against one. But I tell you one thing. Only extortioners are chosen for a profession like yours. And men who rape children as punishment. Let them sit in their judgment. It's worse than time from the gallows. Now it'll be thirty. And I won't go on squabbling with you. We're not in the tavern. What has happened to my dignity as a judge? Anyway, I've lost interest in your case. Where's that old couple who wanted divorce? Bring them in. This case is adjourned to 15 minutes. You will not know that he's a divorce. Shall I? My spelling songs. I accept. I hear you want to be divorced. How long have you been together? 40 years, Your Honour. And why do you want to divorce? We don't like each other anymore, Your Honour. Since when? The very beginning, Your Honour. <laughs> <laughs> I'll think about your request and render my verdict when I'm through with the other case. I need that channel. <laughs> <laughs> I've noticed you have a soft spot for justice. Now, I don't believe he's your child, but if he were yours, wouldn't you want him to be rich? All he'd have to do was say he wasn't yours, and he'd have a palace, and many horses in his stables, and many beggars on his doorsteps, and many soldiers in his suits, and many petitioners in his courtyard, wouldn't he? What do you say? Don't you want him to be rich? Hear now what the sad girl thought, but did not say. Have you golden shoes to wear, he'd be as cruel as a bear. Even with his left disgrace, he'd laugh in my face. Hearing a heart of print is to travel to listed. Being powerful and bad is to harden a lad. Then let hunger be his foe. Hungry men and women know. Let him fear the dark some night. But, but not daylight. I think I understand you. He knows me. I brought him up. He's in rights. That's not true. He must have been in a pigsty. I'm not a pig. But there are some who are. Where did you leave your baby? Or I'll show you, you vulgar creature! She's a criminal! She must be whipped immediately! Tell Irish, should you promised? You're on the paper! Plaintiffs and defendants, the court has listened to your case and has come to no decision as to who the real mother is. Therefore, I, the judge, am obliged to choose a mother for the child. I make a test. Show her. Get a piece of chalk and draw a circle on the floor. Place the child in the center. Stand near the circle, both of you. Now, each of you take the child by one hand. The true mother is she who can pull the child out of the circle. Court of Justice, I object. The face of the great arbitrary estates which are tied to the child as the heir should not be made dependent on such a doubtful duel. In addition, my client does not command the strength of this, of this person who is accustomed to physical work. She looks pretty well fed to me. Pull! What's the matter with you? You didn't even pull. I didn't oh. hold on to him. What did I say? The ties of blood. You wanna? I take back everything I said. But can I at least look after him until he knows all the words? He knows of you. Don't influence the court. Better you know what twenty ways or so. Fine, I'll make the test once more, just to be certain. Pull! Oh, I pull him up, so I was returning to bit. Pull! And in this manner, the court has determined the true mother. Take your child and be off. 
I advise you not to stay in the city with them. And you disappear before I fine you for fraud. Your estate fall to the city. Let be converted into a playground for the children. They need one. And I've decided it'll be called after me. Ask that garden. <laughs> now I'll take off this dirty stone. It's not too hot to knock out for the hero. A token of farewell, I invite you all to a little dance in the Mad Rock side. Oh, I'd almost forgotten something in my excitement. Decided to force to create one. That's not right. You have divorced the old people. You have divorced Crucia. Divorced the wrong couple. And I never retract. If I did, how could we keep order in the land? I'll invite you to my party instead. You don't mind dancing with each other, do you? <laughs> I've got 40 piastres coming from you. Cheap at the price. No thanks, Ronald. I'll be needing this. So we'd better leave the city tonight, Michael. If you like him. With my respects, I like him. No, I can tell you. When I found him, it was the day we got engaged. So he's a child's blow. And after that evening, Aztec vanished and was never seen again. The people of Brasilia did not forget him, but long remembered. The period of his judging as a brief golden age. Almost an age of justice. But you, you who have listened to the story of the chalk circle. Take note what men of old concluded. That what there is shall go to those who are good for it. Children to the mother leave and prosper. Carts to the drivers, and they be driven well. The valleys to the waterers, that it yield fruit.